Hello, this is Patrick at 1CNC West, and what we're going to do in this training video is start to apply the sub-spindle toolpath. Now, you'll recall in our last video, we took the part geometry, we flipped it 180 degrees, we also have a brand new toolpath group called sub-spindle, and we have the proper post processor selected for our sub-spindle machining operations. Now, we don't need to look at the solid model to apply toolpath. So I'm going to select the solid model by hitting the letter S on the keyboard. That's the shortcut that takes us into select mode. I can now left click the solid model and then hit the letter B on the keyboard to hide the selected geometry. Clicking the letter B on the keyboard is a shortcut for the blank tool. The blank tool will temporarily hide the selected geometry. You can also access the blank tool at the very top of the screen here on this top menu right here. Alright, so let's start to apply our toolpath. We're going to head over to the command manager and select lathe toolpaths. Why don't we begin with a roughing operation. So I'm going to left click. As soon as we do this, you'll see that the cursor displays the word start. That's to remind us that we need to select the start of the geometry that we'd like to apply the toolpath to. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit and I want to apply the toolpath to the geometry starting right here at the chamfer. So I'm going to left click. As soon as I do that, notice how we have these four arrows. Now the four arrows determine the direction and the side of the toolpath relative to the geometry. I want to be on the outside and I want to cut in this direction. So I'm going to left click. Once I do that, the cursor changes to the word end. I can now take my cursor and just left click at the very end of the geometry. And when I'm done selecting, I can right hand mouse click. All right, so the very first dialog box is the same type of dialog box you're going to see for all of the machining operations. And this is where we define a tool. And remember, when applying two axis lathe toolpath, we're going to need to select a tool from the tool library. Now you can access the tool library two different ways. You can left click on the tool graphic or you can left click on tool changer. Let's left click on tool changer and now we can see our tool changer dialog box. There's two tabs that are available to us. The default tab is the recent tab and this displays a list of favorite and recent tools that were used. And of course you can select any one of these tools if you'd like and click OK. But for us, what we want to do is we want to access the library portion. So I'm going to click on the library tab and you'll notice that all the tools are categorized into different groups. You have turn tools and then you have your live tooling. Let's select a turn tool. I want to select a tool that has a 55 degree insert. So I'm going to left click right here and then I can use the arrow keys on the keyboard to push through the different options. That looks like a good tool and this looks like a great tool. In fact, I'm going to use this tool. So by coming down to the lower right hand corner, I can click OK and one CNC selects the tool. Notice in the lower left hand corner of the dialog box, we have all the relevant information for the tool. Also notice there's a parameter here called name. This is simply the name of the machining operation. So once we apply the toolpath, this machining operation will appear within the NC manager and it will have the name lathe turned rough. Why don't we delete the lathe turn portion and let's rename this to rough sub spindle. I think that looks great. Up here, this is your turret position. Let's put this in turret position number 11. We don't need to worry about the tool offset because one CNC is using the default turret number for the offset. We don't need to worry about coolant and work offset because one CNC will use the defaults within the post processor. For feed rate, we can choose between inches per rev or inches per minute. I'm going to be going inches per rev at 5,000 and I'm going to be using RPM and for this let's use 600. Notice also there's a calculator available to us that can assist in calculating speeds and feeds. Very nice. Also notice that you can output constant surface footage, a max RPM, and also control the direction of the spindle as well. The last thing to take a look at is the notes option. If you use the notes option, you can type in anything that you'd like and this will appear as a note within the CNC program at this tool change. I'm going to click cancel and let's come down here and click the next button. 
Clearance style is simply how the tool moves after the machining operation. And you can see that there's different parameters here. Typically, unless you're doing more complicated toolpath, again, you don't need to worry about that. So let's leave that at the default of no move. Let's click next on this. All right, these two options give us the ability to contain the toolpath within a selected boundary. In other words, we can contain the toolpath within a rectangle. It will still recognize the geometry that we selected, but if we had an additional rectangle created, we can confine the toolpath to that geometry staying within that rectangle. However, we don't need to do that. Let's just keep it simple and use Select Contour. That simply means that we're going to be using the contour that we previously selected. All right, so very good on that. Now the Z clearance and X clearance, this is extremely important. This is where the toolpath is going to start relative to the geometry along the Z axis and relative to the geometry along the X axis. So if we take a look at Z clearance, if we have that set to 200 thousandths, that means the toolpath is going to look at the geometry we selected and it's going to take the rightmost geometry and it's going to stay away from that 200 thousandths. So that's going to make the toolpath start right about here. Now if we take a look at the X clearance, it looks at the greatest X value geometry, which would be this guy right here, and 200 thousandths away from that would be right about where that cursor is. So at a Z value of 200 thousandths and an X value of 200 thousandths, the toolpath is going to start right about here. So remember, the Z clearance is just a distance measured from the rightmost geometry that we selected, and the X clearance value is a value measured from the geometry that's at the highest X value. Okay, so we're going to be starting right about there. Very important to remember that Z clearance, X clearance, that's your start location. That looks good, so let's click next on that. Now for cut direction, we have two parameters. We have longitudinal and facing. For this example, we're going to be using longitudinal. For the direction of cut, we're going to leave this set to auto. Auto simply means that we're going to be using the direction of cut we defined earlier when we were selecting our geometry. Remember those arrows we had here and how I selected the arrow that was pointing from right to left? That's why we're using auto. And of course, you can overwrite that if you want to and change the direction, but let's leave that set to auto. We don't need to worry about smart rough now. We'll take a look at that in another video. For rough style, we have normal, and then we also have offset toolpath, and you also have the ability to output a can cycle. For the cut increment, I'm going to cut at 100 thousandths. For the retract clearance amount, I'm going to reduce that to 50 thousandths. Now for groove control, we don't have any grooves created, but you can see that for groove control, if you have cut grooves set to off, the toolpath will not go inside of the grooves. The toolpath will ignore the grooves. But if you have this set to on, the toolpath will take the tool based upon its insert angle and go into the grooves as far as it can without violating the geometry. But let's leave this set to off. Okay, let's click next. Now within this final dialog box, this is how we control how the toolpath approaches and exits the geometry. Now there's a couple examples to go through here. Let's uncheck both of these. All right, so cut to end. If I leave this unchecked, notice how the radius of the insert is going to move along until the left side of the insert becomes tangent to the end of the geometry. That's cut to end. But look what happens if I check this. Now the very bottom part of the tool nose radius becomes tangent to the end of the geometry we selected. Typically this is what you want unless you have something like a shoulder or something. Now another thing you can do is you can put in a value. You can use this option called overcut amount. If I have an overcut amount set to 100 thousandths, that means the toolpath is going to move an additional 100 thousandths. Cut from start, in other words, how we approach the geometry, works exactly the same way. In this example, you can see the bottom of the tool nose radius is tangent to the end of the geometry. But if I select cut from start, now we have the side of the insert tangent to the geometry. Again, this is typically what you want. If you activate entry amount, like I've done here, I've got a hundred thousandths. That means the toolpath is going to start a hundred thousandths away. 
All right, very good. Let's click finish and let one CNC generate the toolpath. Very good. Now, if we take a look here, you can see that the toolpath has started a hundred thousandths from the very beginning of that chamfer. And if we take a look up here, you can see the toolpath has gone an extra hundred thousandths. And remember our Z clearance and X clearance values of 200 thousandths, that's right here. And that distance is measured from the very end of the geometry here, the rightmost portion of the geometry, and the X offsets measured from this geometry right here, which is the X highest value of geometry within the part. All right, that's it for this video. And in the next video, we're going to take a look at profiling and facing the part. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.